Hey guys, welcome to my video for 10 more new figures coming out in July 2019. I'm making this second video because there were so many amazing figures coming out this month and there was 10 more I wanted to talk about that I couldn't fit in the original video. So without further ado, what do you say we get started with number 10? Starting off this list at number 10, we have this epic collection piece of Bowser from First Four Figures. He is one of several super detailed statues that the company is coming out with to please hardcore Nintendo enthusiasts. And after a gruelling two year pre-order period, the King Koopa has finally been released in two limited versions. The regular version includes everything you see here, he stands on a spiked base and his scales and shell are incredibly sculpted and painted down to the finest minute detail. The exclusive version includes this dynamic fire column which is fully animated by flashing LED lights inside the flame. And he stands at a whopping 50 centimeters tall and due to the fact that he's made entirely from polystone, he weighs in at a hefty 21 kilograms with his flame attached. So you can only imagine how much this is going to cost to send in the post and speaking of cost to get one of under 2,000 produced he retailed at $700 US but that figure would increase exponentially with shipping but no doubt he's an incredible piece for any Nintendo collectors and his menacing pose really reminds me of the first time I encountered him in Super Mario 64 first four figures also have plans to release definitive collector statues of the Mario Brothers from their respective franchises and they'll be coming next year the next figure is made by Aquamarine and they have produced some really amazing figures and have held a very outstanding track record for quality over the last few years. And I'd say this figure of Saber Lily is no different. She is just gorgeous, delicately placed upon the flower petals. I probably would have included her higher if I didn't already own two figures of her and while figures of all the different renditions of Saber are very saturated in today's market, thankfully releases of Saber Lily are quite sparse with plenty of variation between action figures and pre-painted models, but she's definitely one of the more elegant Sabers and I've always taken a liking to her outfit because of the way her dress blooms out at the bottom but stays taunt around her waist. And this is definitely up there as one of the most high quality pieces of her. It's simple, yet it's beautiful. And I love the juxtaposition of her being refined and ladylike, yet holding this magnificent royal decorated weapon. And as I said earlier, the flower base adds something really unique and different to it. It's very easy to tire of the plain round plastic bases after a while, and I'm glad this does something completely different. The next character is unique because she is entirely original and based on a design from illustrator Jin Hapobi. Lechery is the company that manufactured her and I honestly believe she is to date one of their best works and I say this because despite having produced well over a hundred original figures, I find that something is often lacking in their final designs. To give some backstory, Lechery specialises in producing some very out there adult figures, catering to I do not know who but there are some interesting ones for sure. Despite them making a select few high quality pieces, I found that most of their figures, for lack of a better word, are very bland and dated in both their design and build quality. And perhaps that's what they're going for, maybe they're appealing to old school otaku veterans but believe it or not the adult figure market is quite competitive and companies like Alpha Max, Dragon Toy or Orchard Seed just obliterate them in terms of quality. And that's why I say it's really good to see a figure like this come out of Lechery because she is anything but bland. Everything about this figure is stylized, her face and eyes have an intriguing complexion and I feel if I step back and take a look at this figure as a whole, it speaks to me on many different levels. First of all, it is mind boggling why someone in a swimsuit would be wearing flashy red heels but it just works. And secondly, it's less common to see figures in a seated pose, let alone one where they're leaning their back into a rounded arch and squishing in their stomach and I would not say that's an appealing pose to go for at all but Again, she's just pulling it off. She has these long legs covering herself and no matter which angle you glance at her from, she remains very commanding and I applaud the sculptor for challenging themselves in turning a difficult design into an outstanding figure. At number 7 we have the purple version of Rias Gremory in one of the most popular and arguably overused outfits for anime girls to be put into. And of course that is her in the bunny girl outfit. 
Why is it for so long Japan, unlike anywhere else, has used the bunny girl as a symbol of fandom and cosplay? Well, with a bit of a history lesson, I can actually answer that. You might know that the bunny outfit was first implemented by the popular Playboy Enterprise. It was designed by Zelda Wynn Valdez for nightclub waitresses during their shifts at the popular Playboy Club. The initial design, which remains the same to this day, was unveiled in 1959 during the television show Playboy's Penthouse and was put into club circulation throughout the following years. And it became iconic very quickly and the Japanese seem to just latch onto this costume for cosplay, modelling or character design more so than anywhere else and it has since become integral in their pop culture. The reason it took off in Japan so freely is actually due to the lack of Playboy's presence in the country. Because you see, in the States and parts of Europe, the Playboy company copyrighted and trademarked the Bunny Girl outfit and have even pursued legal action against other entities using it without their permission. Whereas in Japan, Playboy really turned a blind eye. Copyright laws were not enforced and the people were free to use the costume as they pleased. And that spark left unchecked grew into a wildfire that took over the community and it's now become one of those costumes that every popular anime girl will eventually don. And this isn't the first time Rias has worn the bunny outfit. She's actually donned it several times before in figure form and in fact this purple figure here is a variant for two other black and white costumes that were released in 2017. But it's good to see her come back with a fresh cone of paint and a darker pair of stockings and I think this version is actually the pick of the bunch. I'm not gonna lie, I love Dick and I honestly can't believe it's got as many seasons as it has and as a fan of the series I'd be very happy to add this awesome figure to my collection. This next figure made it onto my list late due to several figures release dates getting delayed into other months but I'm glad I went back and had a second look at Tanya from Your Senki made by Poultra. And if you've ever seen the sad yet invigorating tale of Tanya the Evil before you'll know that she is an eccentric, ruthless tyrant stuck in the body of a young teenage orphan. And on one hand, she's cold and calculating and vicious, but on the other, she's helpless and she's desperately struggling to survive. It's hard to name an anime that gave me such mixed emotions about a character, and when I look at her figures, I find most of them fail to capture the insecurity and vulnerability of her, and just make her look absolutely batshit off the walls crazy. This figure shows her in the thick of battle, rocketed high into the air, shooting down upon her enemies enemies, and during the series Tanya places a heavy emphasis on obedience and tactics. She tells her troops to always take the higher ground and fight above their enemies, she balances their mental health despite being in horrific situations and rewards them for their loyalty. And call me crazy but when I look at this figure, I see all of that. I see her tactics, I see her personality, and I see her vulnerability. I feel it captures her as a character. It's not the prettiest to look at but but it's honest. And even though that's intangible nonsense, I feel it separates itself from all of the other figures of her and it's also very different to anything I'd usually buy, but she as a figure is just as captivating as the first time I saw her. Because he is this small blonde haired girl dressed as a Western European soldier aiming down the sights of her weapon with conviction in her eyes. And I know a lot of people will disagree with me, but I think she's an amazing character design from a series that really makes you think about how horrible humans can be. And I think this figure so far has captured her better than any others and it's very unique, so I'm happy to include it at number six. The next figure is available in four different versions, released by Taido, who are no strangers to creating Hatsune Miku. The first version was released in 2017, and I've had my eyes on it and the three colour variants ever since. Here are two new colours available. The first one is in pink and has Sailor Miku winking wearing an adorable little hat and holding up a lifesaver. The second colour is yellow and it either comes with Miku looking out with both eyes just like the original or closing her eyes, this time holding a yellow and green lifesaver. And out of all of the sailor outfits, I'd say I prefer the pink one, but all of them are super cute and I love Miku in this design. This figure is going to be available to order in stores, online and also as a prize, so the price hasn't been confirmed yet, but it's pretty much guaranteed to be affordable. I really love the ocean colours they chose 
clothes to use on Miku's socks, hair and bikini underneath her outfit and it seems with these new variants that her socks and uniform are going to be more of a pale lighter blue than the original. I also really love that her ribbons are attached with rope like off the ship. It's kind of a funny detail but very fitting to her and her eyes are also quite stunning. I cannot wait till all of these figures are available so I can pick which one I'd like to buy. I mentioned in my original figures list that Wonder Festival is coming up at the end of the month and with Wonder Fest there are a slew of amazing and not so amazing amateur works that are sold in limited quantities on the day. And one of, in my opinion, the best amateur circles who have made figures for Wonder Festival since 2009, who I have a lot of faith in producing really high quality garage kits, is Grizzly Panda. And no, I don't have a speech impediment, it's actually spelt Grizzly. Their two latest projects which they're bringing to the festival are two garage kits of Gilgamesh and Saber Alter from the Fate franchise. And because there's no pictures of the painted Saber prototype, Gilgamesh takes the number four spot. Now, I know the fact that he's a garage kit will turn a lot of people off, but I have faith that such an amazing sculpt like this would get picked up for a pre-painted release. One thing you may have noticed if you've been on my channel for a while is outside of Shonen like Dragon Ball Z and One Piece, I don't usually go for many male anime figures. And I don't know why that is, just most of the time they simply don't appeal to me. But with this one, how could it not? The multiple swords surrounding him make this figure a spectacle. There's not many male servants I really like in the Fate franchise, and I think if I had to pick a favourite it'd probably be Gilgamesh. And this figure makes him look very majestic in the middle of the blades. And I actually like the fact that he's shirtless with this grand cape flowing behind him, showing off the red marks on his body. They really separate well from his golden armor with navy blue decals And I think if he was in a full suit of armor I wouldn't have the same endurance to him and he wouldn't have this incredible commanding presence about him Another figure I had in my original July list was Ninja Batman and while I think that figure was amazing for its grandeur I think this figure is amazing for its simplicity. Whereas the first figure captures the crisp detail of the character, this figure settles on a shaded matte finish. The first thing that jumps out about this figure is the incredible pose of Batman himself. He's perched atop this pillar with a serrated fan hacked into the bottom of it. The pillar is snapped and it's sinking into the murky waters below. And have a look at that base. I know it's very simple, but it's incredible how much it actually looks like dark rippling water. He's holding this kunai with the bat symbol on the end, which is corny, but very fitting. And Batman really looks like he's a ninja in a way that only Batman could, because only he would wear a purple belt with gold pouches for his gadgets. And the dark cape is very long and trails down his back like the dark knight we're used to. And there's not much else to say about this figure. It's a 1 8 scale at 22 centimeters tall, and just like the other Batman included, it's also made by Good Smile Company. At number two, we have another amazing work by Max Factory, this time of Jean Alta from the Fate franchise. Out of all of the Fate characters, I'm not that big of a fan of Jean, but I can't deny there have been some amazing figures of her, and the reason I include this one at number two is how beautiful they've made this character look outside of her armor. And before I get into how much hair she has, I'm going to start at the bottom of her. Because look at these shoes. They, in the same way as her dress, reflect this incredible blue and purple highlight. It sounds stupid, but she reminds me of a Cadbury wrapper. Above her shoes, her thigh-high tights sit magnificently on her legs, and because her dress parts in the middle, she really gets to show off her femininity. And what an incredible dress. The more you follow it up, the better it sits, clinging to her figure. And she is finally shown off here as something more than just a dark warrior. And better still because she's elegant and sleek, not because she's in a bikini or a coat, but she's in this ravishing purple and red dress. But fuck, she has got a lot of hair! And I don't know how I feel about the hair, there is just so much of it. If you look at her from the back, literally all you see is hair. And that's fine, but I'd like to see how she looked with a little bit less hair to accentuate the dress a bit more rather than confining it. 
in hair. <laughs> but I really love this figure overall with her golden eyes and her long gloves. And I think if there was just a tiny bit less hair, she probably would have made it into my initial list because I'd really like to see the arch in her back and how she looks a bit more from behind, but it's all just covered up by hair. So at number one, just missing out on the original top 10 figures of July list is this incredible Monkey D Luffy statue created as the debut work of Unique Art Studio. And this is a very impressive statue and finally gives hardcore One Piece fans an official legal option for a quality polystone figure that isn't made by unofficial groups. The figure stands at 50 centimeters tall in total, which would take up quite an amount of shelf space, and it features Luffy standing atop swirling waves of water and treasure with that big stupid grin that Luffy is famous for. He's draping his hefty captain's coat over his back, but this is removable and you can reveal his trademark red vest underneath and pose him like this if you want to. One of the things I love the most about this figure is his sword has this grand and elaborate handle, but it's resting in this simple leather sheath held together with rope slotted into his belt. But overall the piece has incredible detail throughout, and rightfully so because it is a quite high priced item. 2200 have been released, and while there is still some in stock, to take home one of these figures you'd be paying over 80,000 yen, which is over $1,000 Australian and over $700 US. So the price is quite high and I imagine the scale and the size of the polystone would make this figure also quite heavy So shipping would not be cheap and that was it for my second list of new figures coming out in July I hope you guys enjoyed these two lists overall and definitely look forward to August because this is going to be an ongoing series now um, and I really enjoy making them. So let me know in the comments down below what your favorite figure coming out this month is and look forward to the next video. So until then guys, enjoy figure collecting. All right.